It's 6-6 Duramax day, and with that, the new Greenville update with some new Duramaxes. How fitting. I genuinely haven't been this excited for a new Greenville update in a while. Summer always seems like a really exciting time for Greenville, and the player count reflects that. At the time of recording this, Greenville has hopped up to the number 6 spot on the Roblox popular game sort. Haven't seen the players peaking this high since about last summer personally. Not even the revamp itself went this far. So, one of my favorite things in this update you might have already noticed, in fact it's kind of hard to miss, it's kind of inevitable that you'll see it every time you play the game, that would be none other than about after two years, the new dealership. This new dealership is one of my favorite things in this update. It's so nice, it's so appreciated. Cause finally, we have a new dealership. Like the last one was here for so long. I was kind of getting bored of it. It was kind of dated compared to some of the buildings in game two, but now it's looking real good. I was hoping that the parking lot would also be a little bit changed up, be a little bit more uh, diverse-ish, and kind of slanted like how it is in real life in terms of the exit. Because before it was just straight out and it was kind of, you know, boring leaving. The parking lot itself looks a lot better. Plus the front here, this whole water section has been redone. There's actually a car up front on display. There's some rocks on the side of the water here too to kind of decorate it up a bit. There's a lot more shrubbery and everything on the sides here. We've got three American flags up front permanently, no longer just the side of it's American themed. I guess that was kind of the destruction of the last dealer, just got American themed and then, you know, that was the last hurrah to it. Got a bunch of cars out front, which I'll get into later because that honestly might be my absolute favorite thing about this update. But going inside here, it's so tall. It just has a huge presence. The dealership's just getting bigger and bigger. GB2, we literally had no dealer. Then we went up to a small dealer. Then like half a dealer in GB3. And then they expanded it in the revamp. And now we have this, which is just huge. So many glass panes and windows and yeah. So many things in here. There's like desks and chairs and like plants and water things and this is really detailed this is everything there's so many pictures in here too there's so much detail like the little details the offices back here looks really realistic there's a hall down there go down there later so many pictures on the wall where you take delivery of your vehicle or whatever too and i guess we we're back in 2006 where they're doing a ppi on this um silverado but got the roadmap logos up there even the top of the ceiling and everything that's super detailed too Drain systems here on the side, in the middle, like the fire station, big fan. Looks realistic and it's gonna be really fun to do like some dealer oriented role plays. Bunch of pictures around here. This room, roadmap, like a city and stuff. I don't know, there's a bunch of random pictures on the wall. There's that same one. More stuff over here. I don't know what this door leads to. I'm assuming outside, oh, that's literally nothing. Through here, got the printers, cubicles. This door leads to here. Oh yeah, this is the main hallway. And out here, it's also blocked off. But anyway, going back up for, oh, this is actually a really cool lounge area. Guest lounge. Hmm. Some more offices. And all the pictures out in the front room are pretty cool. Even got the picture from the Halloween update that was on the thumbnail. Another old thumbnail for the game. Uh, what else? Oh, that's another old thumbnail right there. Uh, some of these I don't really know where they're from. Kind of reminiscent of some older stuff, kind of reminding you of things. It's really nice to have just a new atmosphere here because it was the same for so long, but now it's just fresh and new and it looks cool. And when you're inside, honestly, the coolest part to me is just the small details like this. On the cars here, there's like these little numbers on the windshield. It actually lists the price. Then up front, it has dealer plates out back too genuine dealer plates and there's literal window stickers like just tiny details like this and how realistic it looks is so cool to me it looks like a genuine window sticker it gives the features gives the actual price you can buy it for in game gives you the fuel economy you know 
fuel type, and then these extra things here, which are not actually filled in since there's no real, you know, crash ratings in game. All vehicles sold at this roadmap location are provided with basic motor vehicle warranty, valid until initial departure of the dealership parking lot. So, um, you basically have that warranty for like five minutes. Nice. Now, something really cool that has to do with that is the dealership interactive job. Roadmap dealership worker. Work for one of the leading dealerships in the area. Join it, and there will be NPCs that start going in the parking lot, and you genuinely have to go chase them down and sell a vehicle to them. Like, it's it's so cool. By far my favorite interactive job. I sold a Suburban, or I sold a Tahoe to myself, my clone. Even my clone is a cultured person, you know, he likes to collect more GMT 100s. All right, what's this lady want? Get her in this, uh... Maxima or Ultima, whatever this is. When you're over here, it pops up the window sticker so you can remember all this stuff and it actually says on the lot, you know, the window sticker on the car, really cool. And every server, it's different. It's not just the same thing for the entire game. Like you're not just stuck selling the same cars over and over and over and over again. Every server, it's like prop cars. When you join a new one, there will be different cars in different locations. So it's really cool, I like that. I think Silas actually mentioned to me that he thought that would be pretty cool and I had no idea this was coming. So really pleasant surprise. Bring this customer into the dealership and remember the car's specifications so i have to remember all of this this car probably has like a thousand billion trims so i don't think i'm gonna remember any of this but let's try it it's an sv 2.5 all wheel drive with these wheels okay it's black then you gotta lead them to the dealership front desk you have to walk kind of slow well i mean you don't have to walk slowly but they take a while because they can't run they just walk at normal speeds come on walk faster <sighs> no, but seriously, this is so cool. The fact that you have to go out into the parking lot and just kind of flag them down, basically get them in the dealership. And if there's actually multiple people on the job, you probably have to fight other employees too. Oh yeah, so once they're at the front desk, then this pops up on your screen and you're supposed to put in the actual right car. It puts up, I think, all the vehicles that are currently on the lot, like in that server onto the model list here. And once you select the right one, which I think that is the right one, then you go to the trim, was the SV 2.5. The color is black, so there's one black, right? Super black. Um, dual tone? Uh, I'm gonna go with this. Come on. Ah, no, I did it wrong. The customers declined the offer and they just walk away. Off to find another customer. Let's do this again. It's actually cool. I found myself just playing with this, messing around, trying to get customers for like 15 minutes or something. Just, you know, having fun. This is genuinely really cool. Oh, it's me, it's me, it's me. What are you gonna buy? What are you gonna buy? My clone. Buy something cool. Oh, you're buying a Prius. Are you serious? Well, I already sold my clone two Tahoes, so 55 MPG. <laughs> All right, let's sell this Prius to myself. Let's go. Come on. I know you can walk as fast as I am. You're literally me. Go a little faster, please. Just walking straight through the bushes, you know, absolutely no care given. Um, so 2006 Velfire. Uh, I think it's, how am I supposed to know what trim it is? Oh, actually it told me. I probably should have paid attention to what it said. The rims, um, is that good? Oh, come on! Oh, well. Well, let's see if I can actually get a customer to buy a car for me this time. Oh, it's me again! Okay. Come on. Get something cool. Come on. Don't get a... Don't get a journey. Oh, my gosh. Why? Why are you getting a journey? Piece of junk. I'm trying to hop on the car? What are you doing? Can you just, like, lead them around to random places in the parking lot? Oh, no. They actually go where they're supposed to. Oh, wait, no, they don't. <laughs> I can just, like, lead them aimlessly. All right, let's test this out. If I just, like, walk off the dealership lot, will they despawn? Or will they just, like, endlessly follow me? Are they just gonna walk around the... Oh, okay, yeah, they despawn. Is that me over there again? Oh, no, that's some random guy. All right, what does he want? I don't think these cars out front, like the MDX and this LX, I don't think they're actually registered as genuine cars that you can sell to people. This is really cool, though, looking at the window sticker. 52.7. I like that feature a lot. All right, let's try to sell this Prius again. Failed on the last offer. Okay, this is the color. And then, okay, it's a base. Let's successfully sell a car. I don't got it all day. It's about to close. All right. Let's change the color to this. And will you buy it? Ha oh, ha, there we go. All right. Does he want the keys? Or like, that's his deal, I guess. Now for the last thing related to the dealership remodel, we have a new paint shop. No longer is it on that side over there where is the body shop, I guess is what it's called, which is different than the paint shop. There's some signs to guide you over to it. It's pretty much just in the back. This part of the dealership existed before, but nothing was ever really there. Well, nothing you can go into. It was blocked off, but now it is the paint shop. Got the two Mustangs there, of course. Roll up in here. There are three lifts, pretty similar to how it is in Tires Plus. 
Same old paint UI that we had before, but now you can actually preview the paints. Before you could not do this, and I know it drove a lot of people crazy. You'd be wasting your money, you know, figuring out if it even looked good in your car at all. Same thing goes for premium paints and everything. So I have not purchased this at all yet. And I back up and goes back to normal since I never bought it. Inside of the paint shop here is so huge. This part of the dealership itself is probably about the size of Joe's, if not bigger, if I'm being honest with you. Huge roadmap logo right over here. This door leading into the actual dealership, the front area. Got some tires stacked over here, some more lifts, a bunch of support posts in the middle, some pictures on the wall, FJ, another FJ over there, picture of an IS in front of the Hinoji store, BMW at the park, more tires stacked and more tires and a humongous fan. And to just kind of wrap up the dealership review, Outback has also been redone, the parking lot. There's a lot more spaces here than before. This part right here, you can actually drive up into it. This is where the bunny's lair pretty much was. Well, actually the bunny's lair is in the park, but his, uh, his mission spot, if you know what I mean. And then right here connects to Top Dog Printing. Well, used to be called Top Dog Printing, now it's the Homer building. That covers the dealership, super duper cool. Really happy to have like a new atmosphere when you first join the game. That old dealership was there for so long, probably one of the main things that I was wanting changed in terms of buildings, and we got it. Now next up on my agenda of cool things in this update is right by the Fox Mountain Bank, there's a new neighborhood, Lakeville. Has a similar sign to the 6th Housant neighborhood. There's, well, there's a lake right here. Another one. It's on the smaller side. It's just a nice, you know, community lake. Go swimming in it. The water's really low down compared to the actual, like, uh, top of the pebbles here. My favorite part of the lake is actually probably just the parking lot sloping down, if I'm being honest. This Saturn is not part of the update, but recently got updated, so now it has, uh, I think, new sounds. The exhaust tip is kind of rusty and falling off, and also it's squatted. Also has funky suspension, so, you know. There's that. But my favorite part about this neighborhood here is this house right here. This house is so cool. I remember there was a house near the Cynex neighborhood in about uh, late GB2 that had a super long driveway and it was just, you know, a normal house. I kind of think this is sort of the successor. It just looks like it's pretty much on maybe about an acre of land-ish. You know, there's some more land over here. I don't really know where the property line ends, but this is pretty much right next to the action, but just enough off the road. I feel like a great compromise between six houses and the two houses down over there by the Cynics intersection. You get to see everything going on right there at the edge of your property, but you also have a little bit more privacy like six houses does. So plus you get like the benefits of the farmhouse with a bunch of land. So this is definitely one of my favorite houses in the game now. Lots of room to mess around on here. And I don't know if Heen fixed this yet, but you were literally able to fall through. Uh, he fixed it, yeah, because I fell through when I first came to this house. I literally just fell into the bottom of nothingness. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That was fun. And of course, that's still not all for this neighborhood. You keep going down. Messed up road here. But there's a couple other houses. There's also this parking lot for the lake. Second one. Wait, that's an exit. Oh. <laughs> I'm assuming these are probably going to turn out like the lake houses. People are going to use them and think they're like amazing for about a week. And then probably it's not going to be used, which is kind of sad. Oh, I didn't even know this is here. No, no, don't fall in. Now for Hunter and I think Gabe's favorite part of the update. Gabe's favorite because he likes blue everything. And this is a blue building. Culver's has been added to GV yet again, technically, because there was a Culver's made in like 2018, 2019. It was going to come in the revamp, but it never did. And now we actually do have a Culver's. This one is way more detailed than the one that was in 2019. Standards have definitely gone up. Just look at this place. So detailed. It's called Connors in Game. EST 1984. And it's right by the RP house, so probably gonna be coming over here a lot to, you know, get food and stuff. I hope people open this up a lot, because I feel like this area of the game is somewhat forgotten sometimes because, uh, I mean, it's near spawn, but everybody in RP server just goes up and down the main roads and up and down the main roads. This texture is nice. Go through the front and it's so detailed on the inside. Get the menu up there, get the logo. This does have an interactive job, which I'll show in a second here. So in a machine, tables and everything. This is just such a detailed place. Back here we get uh, the kitchen, deep freezer. There's a bunch of deep freezers actually. Well, there's two. And of course, would it even be a building if it didn't have some Mustangs out back? Come on. I mean, it's got two Mustangs. And then over here, get the air conditioning units. Great for summertime. 
got the menu right here speaker and then the interactive job I mean, it's probably what you expect it to be i mean it's pretty much the same as all the other interactive jobs for fast food places this is a pretty good selection of interactive jobs now although i gotta say the dealership worker job by far my favorite it's just so cool you know just npc comes up order some food put it into the cash register and they actually fixed this here it was broken for a while i think at least for me boom then uh where's the tray am i crazy oh here's the tray oh also there's like steam coming out of here uh yeah that was what she ordered okay <laughs> that's culver's oh that's me again oh well he's he's no longer here probably my favorite thing about this building for no reason at all i just really like the drive through i like the sidewalk work what is up what is up and then uh you're right here your food and the drive through does work in here as you probably expect that's culver's next up the new apartments have been added well kind of i was confused when they first were teased on where they were because i could not figure it out like i was thinking they were going to be where the old ones were in gv3 but the surroundings didn't quite match up now i figured out where they are and you'll probably see them in about three two one yep <laughs> there they are right here on the hill behind this big farm kind of out of the way it's not that difficult to get over here it's really up there on the hill these are definitely the biggest by far buildings that have been under construction well like in under construction stage in gv maybe mr uh, construction man is gonna break his uh, construction skills back out after crushing the super duty you know the last one i got a new one now though so don't worry about that it just looks like kind of a true construction space with uh you know no workers as probably usual so much going on here I always really like the buildings in the construction stage. It's just really, I guess, unique because no other game I don't think does this. And it gives people a chance to do construction role plays all the time, genuinely form construction businesses, and pretty much constantly have new projects all the time. I'm assuming this one over here is pretty much identical. That's the apartments. Guess I'll get going. The park ranger team was added to the game. I feel like most people don't even know that because it was buried in the change logs. It kind of seems to happen when every new team is added to the game since there's so many other features that kind of uh, overshadow it, I guess. But I was indeed right. This is the new park ranger building. The old fire station has been repurposed to that. And if you come inside, nothing's really seemed to change except for you can actually get some uniforms here and you can get your hat. Plus, of course, we have the vehicles. At this current moment, there are three park ranger vehicles, probably more to come eventually. There's two trims for this Caprice here, the ranger alternative with the old style light bar, and the normal ranger with the regular light bar. Then we've also got the Tahoe with one trim, the ranger, and the charger with the ranger trim, as I reviewed previously. That's pretty much the extent to the park ranger update. Some of the top end Mercedes SUVs, if you press G, it has the actual bounce feature. <laughs> that comes on the my box in real life. It literally just bounces, and it goes up until, like, what, 50 miles an hour? Yep. Dude, that's so cool. Because people so were wanting to... this when it first came out, and then uh, it didn't come out. But it's now here. <laughs> so if I go to 50 miles an hour, you'll see it stops. That's so cool, dude. It's just these little details like this. This is such a party trick, but it's so funny. The rim shop, like the paint shop, now lets you preview things before you buy them definitely going to save me a lot of money because i've spent a big amount of money on just buying rims to see what they look like and also we've got 40 new rims in the rim shop per usual update now for the new cars you've probably already seen some of them out front no longer does the dealership ui pop up right when you walk up to the desk you actually have to press a button to enter it press e to buy cars and dealership ui opens up now that the physical dealer is remodeling got a fresh look we've also got a fresh look for the background of the dealer ui very welcome change i like it a lot so since there's so many of these i'm kind of just going to list off some of them that are pretty cool that people might want you know sort of the more popular cars we got the 1969 Dodge Coronet with a couple trims. Well, there's a lot of classics in this update. Following along with that theme, there's the 1970 Ford Mustang, the Boss 302, the Mach 1, and the Boss 429. Plus, we got an old Mercedes here, this old Porsche 930, there's a Turbo, and the Roof BTR. 1991 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Two surprise cars. I know Hunter wanted these to be surprised. I was never posted anywhere. Nobody ever reviewed it either. The 1993 and the 1995 Toyota MR2s. 1998 Mitsubishi Eclipse was refreshed. Probably not quite as much of a sleeper anymore. It's probably more balanced out, but I couldn't tell you. The 2001 Pontiac Aztec was remodeled, you know. Very nice looking car. Um, we also got the 2003 as well. 
The 2007 Bugatti Veyron was finally remodeled. I know a lot of people were begging for this car to get it remodeled because it was probably like the most outdated expensive car in game. And now finally it's up to par with the competition. This thing has been remodeled. And of course the one that people actually care about probably is the 2015 version with the updated lights and more trims. The top trim cost $2,250,000. Top speed is 264 miles an hour. The 2017 Lexus LX was added. The 2017 WRX refresh was finally added. This thing took a while because I think they refreshed it again minorly after the initial refresh and now it's here. The i3 was remodeled. There's probably someone out there that's like, oh my goodness. Got some new Mercedeses, you know, they go bounce, bounce. And the RS7, new S7 too. The 2022 BMW X5 M competition. The Telluride was remodeled. Some people were definitely wanting this because it was pretty outdated and uh, somewhat of a popular RP car I saw it from time to time and of course we've also got the 2022 Acura MDX I was actually kind of excited for this it looks pretty nice now moving on to definitely the coolest part of this update especially vehicle wise the GMT 100 Silverados have been remodeled my favorite trucks in game and well just in general have <laughs> made a return with a lot of options. When these were first added to the revamp like a year and a half ago, they were the most customizable trucks in game. I'm talking about the cat eyes. And now they're probably the most customizable platform in game. You can never have too many GMT 100s. I think Hunter was losing his mind, probably ripping out his hair. How many GMT 100s? Not gonna get too ahead of myself, so I'm gonna start off with the flat eyes. The 2002, previously 2001, 1500 Silverado. This thing has the LS beater, the extended cab. Here are the specs on this thing. This one has the 5.3, I believe. That's so cheap. I'd say it's worth it. I don't know where you're buying one in real life for that much money these days, but yeah. The WT 4.8, so pretty much a base model with the 4.8 and it's an extended cab. And we got the LS 4.8, so a little bit higher trim. I like those rims. And we got the single cab WT 5.3, the LT 5.3 two-tone extended cab. This one might be my favorite 1500 O2, probably right next to the beater. This one's really cool. I like the two-tone. And we've also got the LT Quadra Steer HD. So it's a 1500 HD with four-wheel steering, $23,000. You never see these trucks, they're super duper rare. Oh yeah, and we got the LT53 extended cab. There's so many, they keep going. Here's a comparison of the WT single cab 53 before and after the update. Moving on to the 2002 2500 HD, WT81 Big Block Beater. It is really severely beat up. There's not even a bed on this truck. It's, it's very, very, very rusty. There's a lot broken on this truck and the headlights falling out. Who would have guessed? The LS66 Duramax Diesel with extended cab, the LB7 Duramax, the WT66 Diesel single cab, the 8.1 liter LT crew cab, the LS60 crew cab, and the LT8.1 liter Big Block crew cab. Now for my absolute favorites, the cat eyes. There's three different variants in the dealership now. The O3 has made a return back from GB3, although there is no Duramax for this one. There's three trims, the two-tone LS 4.8 1500 extended cab. We've also got the SS 1500 extended cab. And then the last for the O3 is the LT 8.1 big block 2500 crew cab. For the O6, we've got two separate ones. For the O6, we've got the 1500 and the 2500. For anybody that doesn't know the difference between the O6 and the O3, the O6 is a bit of a beefier hood and a different grille. So for the 1500s, we've got the LS 4.8 single cab, the the LT 5.3 extended cab, the LS 5.3 extended cab, slight differences between LS and the LT. 
chrome mirror caps and uh, you know wheels and stuff like that. Then we've also got the SS extended cab. Pretty much what the Intimidator will exactly look like, except with some very minor differences. The grill inserts different. The LS 4.8 step side single cab, really the best step side model that's pretty much out there in general. And we've got the LS 5.3 crew cab. Now for the best one, the 2006 2500 HD. We got some trims here, the work truck 60 extended cabs, all blacked out, you know, base of the base model. Then we've also got the work truck 66 diesel single cab. Short bed Duramax single cab. You're gonna make for some cool builds. I'm buying one. Got the LT 8.1 liter big block crew cab, the LT 60 extended cab, and my favorite, my truck, which can be identified by the black door handles. Nice touch. The LS 66 diesel crew cab. This thing just looks so beefy now, looking like a proper 2500 HD. Finally got some tow mirrors, cab lights, and even better sounds than before, specifically some I got to help with, plus a sweet tune. Dog on a Wow really did a nice job with this thing. Here's a comparison of it to the original, the previous one, and now the brand new one. Ironic, this thing got remodeled on 668. There's so many options for the GMT 800s. Sounds so good. And listen to that idle. That might be my favorite thing about the sound, just that idle. Full review of this thing and some other trims as well coming soon. Happy Duramax Day, I guess. The 2008 Nissan Altima has been remodeled, and uh, <laughs> it has the, you know, typical Nissan Altima driver spec as a trim. Uh, there's also the SE 3.5 manual, the SE 3.5 CVT, there's also the 2.5 SL, and the 2.5 S. The 2.5 beater, though, literally half the grill is missing. There's just a non-painted front bumper, the mirror's falling off. The white fender, which does not match the rest of the paint. This side actually looks fairly decent. Or is this a dent here? I can't really tell. And then there's a strap holding on the crash bar. The whole thing is rusted out. Well, the muffler is rusted out. There's also some surface rust warming. Rust underneath the taillights. The trunk is just completely crushed in. And it's a little bit squatted. Just typical Nissan Altima driver thing. You can finally, you know, properly drive like a Nissan Altima driver in GVRP and look the part too. Here's how it sounds.
Tail lights out. Hyper flash. Normal. Reverse light. Headlights. Alright, let's get going. This thing is unreasonably fast for some reason. 0 to 100 and breaking test, let's go. Oh, wait. What's it doing? Uh, there we go. Wants to turn that way. It goes to like 120 or something. It's pretty fast. Oh yeah, the scenery here for the braking test has kind of changed out. Well, that's interesting. The final car I'll be going over in depth for this update is the 2022 Mark 8 Golf. This thing has a couple trims. Base model life trim for $26,748. Very specific prices on all of these trims. Might be buying this one because I heard it's really, really slow and I like slow vehicles for some reason. The GTI for $38,330. The Style trim for $29,308. The R for $40,090. The GTE for $40,877. The R line for $29,000. $1,888 and the GTD for $37,309. Here are the specs on the life trim, the base model, specs on the GTI, and specs on the top R trim. Here's how the R trim looks up close. And here's how it sounds. Look at those exhaust tips, super detailed. kind of idle too, I didn't even realize. Got some pops. Alright, let's take this thing out for a spin. 0 to 100 and brake test. Alright, what's this thing got? Pretty quick. Gets up and goes. I had the brakes. Oh, pretty good. Pretty darn good. Probably gonna trade it in on a base model. Sounds kind of kind of productive, but <laughs> I don't know. Need something slower. With that, that's a wrap. One of my favorite updates yet. So, so many vehicles. So many good ones, including literally the remodel of my favorite truck that I got to help out a bit on with some sounds. Funny that it came out on 6.6 Duramax Day too. Finally got some new scenery after a few years to look at when you first joined the game. And those smaller details like the window stickers, just so, so sick for some reason. A lot of stuff is going on with GB right now. It's a super exciting time. Players are up. Summer has technically began. And GVOS is nearly here. Get hyped. This coming weekend, GVOS phones are finally dropping in game via a live event. Very curious to see how the live event will pan out and how everything with the phones will work. Thank you for watching. See ya.